The Biden administration has opened the application process for Americans seeking student debt relief through a test site that went live over the weekend. Financial expert Terry Savage joins us now to talk about it. Hi, Terry. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, well, it's up and running now. At first, they said you wouldn't even have to apply, that they'd figure it out. But now, if you go to studentaid.gov, uh, you can go on your computer. You can actually, this is the simplest application you've ever seen. You click on that button saying, are you looking for student loan debt relief? And then you fill out the simplest form, the easiest website the government ever put up. It asks you for only your name, your middle initial, your last name, and a former last name, perhaps if you were married, for example, your social security number, which you have to confirm by putting it in again, your birth date, your phone number, and your email and confirm that email. Then you scroll down and it says, do you swear, and it gives you all the possible ways that you could be filing your taxes, that if you're single, you earn less than 125,000 on a joint return, less than $250,000, click on the box, and that acts as your signature, that you're creating an affidavit that you qualify. And I believe me, that is it. That's you know, one, two, three. We'll, well, we'll see how it works out, of course. Yes. Should people be clamoring to do it right away? Is there a limited pool of money? No, there's no limit. They haven't set a limit. Um, and so if you do have federal student loans, this is only federal student loans. So you see how they can make it work. Theoretically, once they have your Social Security number, they can check your tax return with the IRS. These are federal student loans, so they have a database of federal student loans. Even although they didn't ask for your federal student aid number, which is unique to every borrower, they also know who's servicing your loan, presumably, even though your student loan, since you took it out, has been passed around like a hot potato right. to different servicers. You know, it was Navi, it was Sally Mae, it was Navient. It's been passed around a number of times. Theoretically, they should be able to look and find out what your loans are. Now, among the things they haven't said is, is this apply to the balance on your largest loan, your balance on the loan with the highest interest rate, the balance on your oldest loan? Uh, what if it's what if you have thirteen thousand dollars in loans, but it's six thousand and seven thousand? Are they going to? I mean, how are they going to do this? We will wait to see how that works out. That was my next question. And then the other question is, it's essentially a gift, could be up to $20,000. Is that taxable money? Are they going to be taxed on that? It, it is not taxable. The Congress has said that it won't be taxable. Now, the 20000 applies if you've had Pell Grants. Those are to low-income families. So the vast majority of this will be to federal student loans. There's been some discussion of whether this applies to Parent PLUS loans, and that was not made clear on this application, although it has been kind of bandied around that it would be applying to Parent PLUS loans. They are federal loans. So if you have a Parent PLUS loan and you qualify based on income, by all means apply. The worst they can do is turn you down. Right. So what do you think about the eligibility? Is it appropriate at this point? You know, there's a cap on salary. Some people have already paid off their student loans or they've refinanced them for a better rate and they don't get any money from this. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion about the unfairness of this. Um, there are many families that didn't take out loans. They scrimped and saved to borrow and didn't borrow to pay for school. Others worked so hard to pay off their loans. Um, and that's they certainly have a right to be concerned about this. It's it's not just even a political football. The real problem I see it is that the people who borrowed years ago and have essentially repaid their original borrowings, but were locked in because student loan rates are fixed at high rates. If they have eight or nine percent loans, the balance they have is basically interest. They've paid off their loans, and this ten thousand won't make a dent. It was a very attractive and appealing. And let us say political idea, uh, as well as a kind of a thoughtful idea, but both political parties have been handing out money hand over fist, whether it was PPP loans or right. stimulus checks or huge unemployment benefits. So who's to say that we should draw the line now? Anyway, Terry, it is a I do I do have one more quick question. Do you think in three months it's reasonable to think that when the payments begin to be due in January, you're already gonna see the credit? Well, oh, yes. They, now, this is a government, the, the same IRS that you can't get through to, the same Treasury Department. That's, that's why I asked the question. People. 
But theoretically, they should be able to match your loans and the IRS numbers. And uh, you bring up a good point. Um, I, I assume they're going to get it done. They want all these applications in by the end of the year. The sooner you do it, the better, I would imagine. But again, if you have loans that are not being paid off through this forgiveness, you'll have to start making your payments again on January 1st. All that abatement of student loan payments has, is scheduled to end again uh, at the end of the year. Right. So, so this you think is you're eligible, to... get on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, you can do this on your iPhone. It's so simple. It's just five lines. All right, Terry, thank you so much for the advice. To find out more from Terry Savage or to ask her your money questions, you can go to terrysavage.com. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, still to come.